So in this problem, question six, we have a car that's driving on top of a hill. And we want to know where it is momentarily airborne. So this is very similar to a problem in the note packet, which was with the roller coaster. So the roller coaster was going up at the top and we wanted to figure out where it barely leaves the surface. And so at that point, we knew that the normal force would be zero. So barely leave the surface is key word for Fn, the normal force, is equal to zero. So again, where you lose contact with the road, once you lose contact with the road, can the road apply a force on you? It's that momentary instance when you barely leave the surface of the road. The road can no longer apply a force on you. That force needs to be in contact with you to be able to apply it. So basically, in this problem, what we're looking for is when is the normal force zero based off of what our speed is. So what we're told in this problem is that we have this hill and this hill can be approximated as a circle. So that is a key here that we are dealing with circular motion. And some of the problems that we've dealt with in the note packet are the roller coaster problems. This is very similar to that. Um, circular motion for the book in the car in the note packet, that's pretty similar to this as well. Um, but for this case, we have the normal force is zero. And we use, since we have circular motion, we use the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration, A sub C, is equal to V squared, the velocity squared, which is tangent to the radial direction, over R, which is, sorry about that, R, which is the distance from the center of this circular path to the object. So in this case, we have this, this hill that can be approximated as a circle that has a radius of 200 meters. Substituting all that in, we can get a velocity of 44.3 meters per second, which ends up being roughly 100 miles an hour. And so that seems reasonable. You know, you don't hear of cars flying off the road, you know, if you don't have a normal force acting, that means the tires have left the road. And so you don't really hear about cars leaving the road up in the air that are going at uh, normal speed limit speeds. So you expect something that was very fast. You know, you see these things in movies where they, they're flying um, over a hill and they, they get airborne. Um, they're usually going really fast, so 100 miles per hour seems reasonable. Then on question seven, you're going to work and you set your coffee cup on your dashboard. You begin driving at a constant rate from rest to 20 meters per second in four seconds. Will the coffee cup remain on the dashboard or will it fall in your lap? So I don't know about you, but I've definitely experienced this where I set it down and either forget about it. Um, you know, it can be on the dashboard. Uh, it can be on the top of your car. You know, that that is why objects remain on top of your car for some time before they eventually fall off. It all depends on what the frictional force is, what the acceleration is. 
So there's a few things with this problem. I mean, we're definitely dealing with things that we've dealt with in this module um, for forces, dealing with frictional forces, summing the forces. But the other thing that we're dealing with is stuff from a previous module, module two and three. So we are driving at a speed where we're speeding up from rest to 20 meters per second in four seconds. What that is telling you, this information right here is allowing you to solve for acceleration. Because you know the initial velocity is equal to zero, you know that the final velocity is equal to 20 meters per second, and you know that it took 10, t equals four seconds. So we have a kinematics equation that allows us to solve for acceleration. Remember, we need to know acceleration or we look to find acceleration when we're summing forces. So when we're dealing with forces, when we're dealing with Newton's second law, Ultimately, we're dealing with summing the forces and dealing with acceleration. So we have the kinematics equation. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. We know the final velocity. We know the initial velocity. We know the time we can solve for the acceleration in that direction. Because remember, what are we ultimately looking for in this problem? We're looking to figure out whether the coffee cup falls. And so what does that tell us? Well, what is the frictional force needed based on the acceleration for the coffee cup not to fall? Because we're accelerating at some amount. You know, that's what's dictating the force that is needed. And so we need to determine whether or not we have that frictional force. So that's what's happening here. Over here in this side view area, this is just dealing with what I just talked about here up top, where you're looking for the acceleration. This is our kinematics portion, which is what we dealt with in modules two and three. This here, the forces, whether or not the cup falls, that is module four and five. So we sum our forces. We have a weight force because the coffee cup has mass. We have a normal force that balances that weight force out because we have no acceleration in the y direction. And then we have our frictional force that is opposing or keeping the cup stationary. And the question is, is the frictional force, static frictional force, that we need to keep the cup stationary, is it less than our maximum static frictional force based on our coefficient and our normal force? That's what we need to decide. So just like all the other problems, we are, draw, we are um, creating our force table. Then we are summing our forces. And we've dealt with a problem um, very similar to this, where it was the first problem in this practice exam, where we're trying to figure out whether we have a great enough frictional force for the object not to move. It was just in a different direction. The first problem, we are dealing with the vertical direction. In this problem, we're dealing with the horizontal direction. And so going through all that, taking, so we saw for acceleration, we've already talked about that. Then we take the y direction. We substitute that into our second law equation. We solve for the normal force so that we can deal with friction at that point. Then we take our table over here for friction. 
go down here and we figure out what is the frictional force needed and then ultimately we solve for the maximum static frictional force. Ultimately what you find is the frictional force needed is greater than what we the maximal, maximum static frictional force that we can have. So what does that imply? That implies that the coffee cup is going to spill in your lap, which is honestly something that I don't know about you, but at least I've dealt with where it falls off the dashboard because you're accelerating too fast. If the acceleration was less, then that would mean that the coffee cup would probably stay up on the dashboard because the maximum static frictional force right here would be greater than the frictional force needed. And so this is a pretty, this is a pretty common problem. Deciding whether or not something is going to happen when looking at forces. So this is something that you're going to want to study. The, in all of these problems, you should be able to do all of these things. If you're having trouble with understanding the process or how we got to a certain answer, that is something you're going to want to reach out to me for and clear up prior to the exam because all of these problems, all these concepts, really, you're never going to get the same problem, but everything will be dealing with the same concepts. So if you don't know the, how to do one of these problems, you don't know how to do the concept and you want to reach out to me and we want to work through that. There's nothing wrong with not understanding the entire concept. It's not addressing it and being prepared for it. That's, that's the problem. So reach out to me. Um, we'll, we'll figure out what you don't understand and, and try and work through that and get you into a better spot going into the exam. Because all of these questions are definitely fair game. These are all problems that have a clear relation to what we did in the note packet, in the expert TA homework. And so these are things that you should be able to know how to do. So again, reach out to me if you're having trouble. And if not, good luck on the exam come Monday.